This video discusses multi-node parallel jobs on the BioWolf cluster. Multi-node parallel jobs on BioWolf primarily are used to run molecular dynamics programs such as NAMD, CHARM, and also LAMPS and GROMAX. RELYON, which is a popular software used for cryo-electron microscopy, is also a distributed memory multi-node parallel program but this video does not cover rely on that will be covered in a different video in this series these programs that i just mentioned namd and charm etc use what's called distributed memory parallelism uh, which is illustrated in this slide. Now, distributed memory parallelism means that different processes on different nodes all access memory that's local to each node that they're running on, but to communicate among themselves, they need a message passing library uh, that connects over the network to the processes running on other nodes. The MPI library is the de facto standard for this internode communication, and BioWolf has several different implementations of MPI installed. Communication over the networks requires a high performance interconnect to achieve good scalability. And what that means is standard TCP IP Ethernet networking. Um, is usually too high latency, meaning that it takes too long for messages to be delivered uh, to really communicate efficiently between numerous processes running on different nodes. Fortunately, BioWolf uses a high bandwidth, low latency network technology called InfiniBand. Uh, for multi-node communication and all nodes on the multi-node partition are connected to the InfiniBand network. The InfiniBand network is a 100 gigabit per second fabric at its core, although the compute nodes themselves are only connected at 56 gigabits per second. As I mentioned before, this network is a low latency network. And what that means, again, is that messages are delivered from their source to their destination extremely quickly on the order of just a few microseconds for small to medium sized messages uh, compared with you know, dozens to potentially up to 100 microseconds for traditional TCP IP based networking and part of the reason for that is InfiniBand communication actually bypasses the TCP IP stack uh, in the kernel of the uh, compute nodes themselves meaning that messages are delivered rapidly directly from application to application and also the CPU is not really involved in the delivery of messages to process. It happens directly by the networking hardware, so that also uh, lowers the latency. The BioWolf InfiniBand network is actually consists of a number of switches, all connected amongst themselves into the compute nodes with around 30 kilometers of fiber optic cabling which as you can see from this picture uh, is quite a sight in our machine room. To submit a multi-node parallel job uh, you need to have some special uh, flags in your sbatch command uh, one of the main things to notice is that for multi-node jobs must run in the multi-node partition. So you have to specify dash dash partition equals multi-node. Um, multi-node jobs, you have to specify a number of tasks. That's this dash dash n tasks. Um, for single-node jobs, 
you would specify a number of CPUs, which could be as few as two CPUs, i.e. one core. Uh, but for MPI multi-node job, you specify a number of tasks. In this example, uh, 64 tasks. Um, and that determines how many different MPI processes will all work together to, to run the program that you specify. Uh, the flag n tasks per core uh, is an interesting flag. What that tells the batch system and your MPI implementation is that you only want one task running on each core of a compute node that's allocated to your job. You may remember from a previous lecture in this series that each core has two CPUs, but these CPUs on a core share computing resources, and so they can't both operate at full speed. And for some types of jobs, that's okay, because some types of jobs are bound by memory access speed or speed to disk I.O., but most molecular dynamics jobs are actually compute bound, that is to say that they are dependent on having good access to CPU resources. And if you had two MPI ranks running on two CPUs on the same core, they would contend for those computing resources and run less efficiently. And then, of course, uh, you can specify the amount of memory per CPU you want, and you have to give it a job script. So there are a couple of more things that are worth mentioning. Uh, there are actually three different types of nodes on the multi-node partition. Uh, the oldest nodes on the multi-node partition are the x2650 nodes and you and if you use the free n command which was introduced earlier you, you can actually see the three different types of nodes all listed under multi-node uh, the oldest ones are the x2650 ones the x2650 is the particular model number of the processor which have 16 cores and 32 cpus then the x2695 and x2680 nodes have 28 cores and 56 CPUs. Uh, despite having the lower number, the X2680 nodes are actually a little bit newer and slightly faster. They're, they're from a newer generation. One thing that's important to remember is that for a tightly coupled parallel job like a molecular dynamic simulation, you want all of the MPI processes running on the same type of node. Otherwise, if there's a speed difference between two types of nodes, the faster processors will wind up waiting for slower processors to do work and the job as a whole will run less efficiently. So you should specify either x2650, x2695, or x2680 in your constraints. Alternatively, if you don't care what type of 28-core node you want to run on because your job is using an even multiple of 28 MPI ranks, you can use the syntax dash dash constraint equals quote open square bracket x2680 vertical bar x2695, close bracket, end quote. And what this does is this will tell the batch system that the job can run on either type of 28 core nodes, either the x2695s or the x2680s, but all of the nodes allocated to the job must be of the same type. In other words, the batch system will not mix x2680 and x2695. Also, it's important to remember to adjust end tasks to match the core count of the nodes that you're requesting. And as I mentioned before, you should always use end tasks per core equals one for parallel MD jobs. Another flag 
that you may want to modify in a parallel MD job is the dash dash requeue and its counterpart the dash dash no dash requeue flag. By default, the BioWolf batch system will requeue a job if it fails. This is often not desired behavior for parallel MD jobs because they periodically write out checkpoint files which can be used to restart the simulation uh, if, it, if the program were to crash or the node were to have a hardware problem or something of the like. And so you would in that case want to restart from your last checkpoint file rather than restarting the entire job. And how, how that's done varies from molecular dynamics program to molecular dynamics program, but it's generally something that you, the user, would have to configure. So you would not want the batch system to automatically requeue your job, and therefore you would usually use the dash dash no requeue flag with a parallel MD job. So once you've got the basics you need to of how to submit the job, you need to actually write the batch script. So it looks very similar to other batch scripts for other applications. You would have you know, your shebang with bin bash, and then if you had any uh, batch system directives you would put into the batch script itself you, you would put them below the shebang as as normal and then you would load the mo appropriate module for your application you know, if you need to change to a different directory you would do that and then you would have your MPI run command MPI run is what actually spawns the parallel MPI processes that run the application and run your program. Now, MPI run is a complex command and its arguments vary from MPI implementation to MPI implementation. You'll want to consult our documentation of the program you're running uh, to see what specific flags you will need, but most every implementation of MPI run has a dash NP flag which tells it how many processes to run and you always want to set that to this environment variable slurm n tasks that way you will be running the same number of MPI ranks as tasks that you requested if you try to run more ranks than requested tasks most MPI implementations will not let you do that and your job will terminate with an error and if you try to run fewer uh, then you're usually going to be wind up wasting resources because you won't be actually using all of the tasks that you requested Another feature of the multi-node partition that is of interest to molecular dynamics users is the Turbo QoS. A QoS, or quality of service, in Slurm is a mechanism by which administrators can define different limits for a given partition or type of job. We can see here in this slide the output from the batch limb command which shows the limits on the various partitions in the system. And you can see that by default, the multi-node partition limits each user to 7,560 CPUs. However, if the Turbo QoS is used, which is done by specifying dash dash QoS equals Turbo, that limit is doubled to a maximum of 15,064 CPUs or half that number 7,532 cores. However, having that higher limit comes at a cost and that cost is that the maximum wall time instead of being 10 days as it is regularly in the, no in the multi node partition uh, the, the maximum wall time uh, is only eight hours. So the purpose of this 
is to allow users who submit short jobs that require lots of resources to have higher resource limits. And this is particularly relevant for molecular dynamics users because molecular dynamics jobs can be checkpointed and then restarted, as I mentioned earlier. So since a molecular dynamics job can be restarted, it is easy to divide a long run, say, of 1 million steps into 10 jobs of 100,000 steps each, and then using whatever software you might like to stitch the trajectories together. Therefore, it is easy, relatively, to construct molecular dynamics jobs that can fit within the 8-hour max wall time. And this ensures that there's good turnover of resources in the multi-node partition. Another point that should be made is that it's important to benchmark molecular dynamics jobs. We see here in this slide um, three lines representing timings of a large molecular dynamics job, the NAMD STMB benchmark, which uh, is a benchmark of a system with well over a million atoms, about 1.1 million or, or so. So it's a, a very large system for molecular dynamics. And, and what we see here is that we're running it on three different systems, CPUs with FDR InfiniBand, and then two types of GPU nodes. Uh, older K20 GPUs and newer K80 GPUs. And what we see is that when you're running on just a single node, obviously using the GPUs in a node is considerably faster. You, you takes fewer time to get a nanosecond of simulation time than using CPUs. However, because NAMD and other molecular dynamics programs scale fairly well, that if you move out to using 8 or 16 or more nodes, you actually can get better results, or faster results, I should say, uh, than using GPUs, because GPUs do not scale as well for molecular dynamics calculations. That being said, on BioWolf, the priority of your jobs is determined by the amount of your prior resource usage, which decays at a constant rate. So if you use twice the number of CPUs for only a 50% speed up of your calculation, that is not necessarily efficient. We prefer to have jobs that are at least 70% efficient in terms of their resource usage, and there is a good description of how to calculate the efficiency of a given parallel job uh, on one of our documentation pages, which I will uh, give the URL to later. But the summary of this slide is it's important to benchmark your jobs. These results here are valid for this particular large molecular dynamics system and the parameters of the job uh, that simulates it. Different simulation techniques, different simulation programs, and different systems being simulated have different performance profiles, so it's really important to do benchmarking for your specific simulations before you launch production runs. You can check the load of your running jobs with the job load command or using your user dashboard, and these are explained in other videos in this course. There are a number of do's and don'ts for using multi-node partition effectively. You do want to benchmark your job so to make sure that you're using resources efficiently. You do want to break your work down into the smallest reasonable 
chunk size and then request an appropriate wall time. This allows you to use the Turbo QoS if that wall time is under 8 hours. Over specifying wall times makes the batch scheduler considerably less efficient and very probably will delay the start of your job. Likewise, it's important to use memory uh, efficiently. However, if you are using all the CPUs on a node, there's no reason not to use or request all the memory on that node either, since you're not really denying that resource to another user. Molecular Dynamics jobs do not tend to be I.O. heavy, that is to say they don't read or write from disk particularly frequently or uh, particularly large amounts of data, but particular types of simulations, for example replica exchange simulations that write lots of energies or checkpoint files to disk uh, could put a stress on the disk system. So if you're running those types of jobs, you will want to benchmark at a small scale to make sure that you're not overwhelming the I.O. system. And as always, if you have any doubts about the correct way to set up your job or how you should be benchmarking or really anything about using the system, you should always email staff at hpc.nih.gov for assistance. Let's look at a simple demo of submitting a multi-node parallel molecular dynamics job, in this case using NAMD. I constructed a very small lipid bilayer system um, and I'm going to run one nanosecond of dynamics on this. So let's start by looking at my batch submit script and you can see that it looks uh, a lot like a, a standard single node batch script. I am specifying the multi-node partition. You'll note I am specifying that it can run on either type of 28 core nodes. However, it must, both of the nodes allocated to this job, I'm requesting two nodes, must be of the same type. They must either be both 26, X2680 nodes or X2695. I'm going to use all 56 CPUs on each one, but I'm only going to have one task running per core, so 28 tasks per node, 56 tasks total. Since this job will fit in 8 hours, and that's the amount of wall time I've requested, I am going to use the Turbo QoS, and I'm going to use 112 gigabytes per node, which is more than enough for this small job. I'm then loading the NAMD module and I'm running MPI run. Note the use of slurm and tasks and the other parameters here are, come from our NAMD documentation. Now I've specified all of these parameters in the batch script. I could also specify them on the command line when I run sbatch of course, but since I have them in the batch script there's no need to do this. I can simply sbatch run by layer dot sh and it will give me a job ID and if I check the queue we'll see that it is in a pending state but it will eventually pick up and start running uh, uh, of course, I've run this before, and I can look at the results. I can see I have an output file from NAMD, and it has typical NAMD energies and timings and other information about the, uh, the system as as it ran. If we go down to the end, we can see that this took about 1800 seconds or about 30 minutes to run. Uh, you know, I did write out a trajectory file, although I have not looked at that. 
Uh, assumedly, if I did, I would, I would see my bilegger moving around. So that's really all there is to it. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your jobs. We can see that our job is picked up. It's running on two nodes at this point. And if we run job load, we can see that as we were expecting, we ran 20, we're running 28 tasks on each of the two nodes, 56 tasks total. So to conclude, you please see the BioWolf user guide. The URL is given here. And particularly read this page about making efficient use of BioWolf's multi-node partition. And I've given the URL here. This second URL gives a lot of information about benchmarking jobs and how to calculate parallel efficiency. So when you're trying to decide how many CPUs or cores you want to use for a particular job, this page can give you some guidelines as to how to make that determination reasonably and in an efficient manner. That concludes this video on multi-node molecular dynamics jobs. Thank you very much.